Dr. Susan Ferguson held the photograph in a trembling hand. It was old and badly faded, the edges curling upwards, but she had looked at it so many times she could see every detail perfectly. It had been taken at her 21st birthday celebration so many years ago, and showed her with her two best friends at the time. Rita and Terry had their smiling faces pressed tight against hers, while in the background, a dance floor was crowded with people in the full exuberance of their youth. Rita and Terry were both long dead now, as no doubt were most of the nameless others, captured in this reminder of a different time. Susan wiped the tears of memory from her eyes and carefully put the image away, hidden from view, lest it be considered sacrilege and destroyed. She didn't need to keep it, but to her it served as a potent reminder of why she had to carry on, that her hypocrisy had a greater goal behind it. She quickly dressed in her ceremonial regalia and turned to face the screen. The computer had logged 304 people as attending, close to a full complement. The names of those few who were absent would be automatically reported to the church authorities for further inquiries to be made and the appropriate action to be taken. Susan pressed the button to begin transmission, paused for a second, and then began speaking. Dearly beloved, rejoice for we are the chosen people. Rejoice in his benevolence. Rejoice in his protection. We are the beloved of God for we follow his commandments. He commanded that we be clean and we washed. Susan dipped her hands in the ceremonial bowl of water and rubbed them together. He commanded that we be separated, that he may enter our lives, and we were separated. She turned slowly in a circle, with her arms outstretched. He commanded that we be covered lest sin enter our hearts, and we wore coverings. She placed a mask over her face, hooking the straps over her ears. Blessed are we who are the chosen. The ritual greeting finished, Susan launched into that day's sermon which had been emailed to her earlier. Across the country, she knew that hundreds of others were repeating the same words to their own flocks, condemning those sinners who had disobeyed, praising those who followed the teachings and promising a future where only the pure would remain. Finally, the service was completed and Susan closed the transmission. As always, she felt guilty for misleading her people, but comforted herself that it was for their own protection. Where recent argument had fallen on deaf ears, where legal enforcement had been ignored, and where appeals to common sense had been laughed at, religious fervor had succeeded. Perhaps this time, the contagion would finally be eradicated, and the scattered remnants of humanity would survive.